Let's take a look now at hypothesis testing for population proportions, one-tailed examples. Again, here is your summary page. I encourage you to screenshot these as we go through so that you always have exactly what you need for each test. The conditions are random sample. And then the binomial distribution, we need to check whether or not it's essentially a success fail situation and there is a set number of trials. And then we have to check if NP is greater than 10 and NQ or N times one minus P is greater than or equal to 10. So those are the conditions we will check. Then we will state our null and alternative. Remember for proportions, we're back to the normal model with whatever level of significance we're given in the question. And then we're back to finding a z-score, and the z-score is a little bit different than the z-score for means, again, because we're using p hat and p, but then, of course, this calculation down here will be p times 1 minus p, or q, divided by n, and then the square root of that. So that is considered the standard error. And then we have the critical value and the p-value that we will need to find. And then we're drawing a conclusion in the same way. Let's take a look at our first example. In this case, we have a local school board has been advertising that 65% of voters favor a tax increase. So again, when you see a number like this, this is what we're expecting to happen. So p is going to be 0.65. That also tells us that the null hypothesis is 0.65. We go on to read that a local politician believes that less than 65%, so less than 0.65, favor the tax increase. To test his belief, his staff asked a simple random sample, so SRS checks this box, of 50 constituents, so N equals 50, whether they favor the tax increase and 27, which is X, said that they would vote in favor. Now, just as a reminder for proportions, we've got three values here that are all related. We have N, we have X, and then we have P hat. And sometimes we're given N and X, and sometimes we're given P hat, and so we have to handle them a little bit differently. P hat is X over N. So in this case, 27 divided by 50 would give me 0.54. So those three values are always related. And typically, you'll be given either p hat and n or x and n. And then you will have to compute the other one. Uh, let's see. If the politician wishes to be 95% confident, so again, alpha is 1 minus c. And so we're taking 1 minus 0.95 to have an alpha level of 0.05. So we've already checked the random sample condition. Binomial distribution, yes, it's a success, success fail because they either want to vote in favor of the tax increase or they do not. And there is a set number of trials because there's only 50 trials. And then, of course, we have to check that NP and n1 minus p are greater than or equal to 10. So n is 50, p again is 0.65. So notice all I'm doing is multiplying to get 32.5 and 17.5. So conditions are met. We have all of the summary information that we need. Let's continue. Continuing our test, we've already written our hypotheses and notice these are p's for proportions as opposed to mu. And the gathering the test statistics and all of that really has to do with knowing which formula or function or equation to use. So when I'm finding my test statistic for a proportion, it's going to be a z-score. I'm going to take, in general, all z-scores and t-scores are observed minus expected over standard deviation. So observed, in this case, is p hat. Expected is P, which is the hypothesized value. And then the standard deviation is the square root of PQ over N or P1 minus P over N. And that gives us a z-score of negative 1.631. Remember, there's two ways to think about rejecting or failing to reject. And that is either using the rejection region or the P-value. 
So if I look at the critical value, I'm just going to use the critical value for 0 0.05 because this is a negative score. So negative 1.631 would be to the left of zero. And I'm looking for essentially what's the area of 0.5, or I'm sorry, 0 0.05 alpha. So I want to know what's this score. And is it on this side or on this side of negative 1.631? So as I can see by plugging norm S inverse of 0 0.05, which is our alpha level, into negative 1.64, we get negative 1.645, which is to the left, negative 1.645. We can see that negative 1.631 does not fall in the rejection region, so we would fail to reject. We're also looking at finding the p-value, and the p-value would be going to the left, and again left because that is the direction of our alternative hypothesis, and we're going to the left of negative 1.631, which in Excel is norm s dist of negative 1.631 comma true or one. And that's going to give us this value. And again, we're looking at P, which is 0 0.0515, which is ever so slightly greater than alpha, which is 0 0.05. And so again, that would tell us to fail to reject. So draw our conclusion. We fail to reject if P is greater than alpha or the test statistic is not in the rejection region, which both are true. So with P greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And again, we always go back to the alternative. If we fail to reject, we don't have evidence that this is true. So there's insufficient evidence to support that less than 65% of the constituents favor a tax increase. To find the corresponding confidence interval, remember that we're just going to use the critical value that we found before, and we're always going to use that positive critical value. It really doesn't matter if you use the positive or negative, but if I use the negative, it's going to give me the higher value first, and we don't want that. We always want our interval to go from least to greatest. And again, finding a confidence interval is all about knowing the formula. So for this, it's p hat plus or minus the critical value. Now, keep in mind, Z star is not the same as a Z score. So I have some students who would take the Z score that we just found and try to use that as the critical value. That is incorrect. We're using a critical value. And again, that's the what we had used before for norm S inverse. And Z star, and then it's the square root of P hat Q hat over N. So you can see that's what I've done here. Also keep in mind the difference between the test. The test uses the square root of PQ over N and the interval uses P hat Q hat over N. So keep in mind that there is a difference there between the standard deviation here and the standard error here. So again, using our values, 0.54 plus or minus 1.645 times the square root of 0 0.54, 0 0.46 over 50. Uh, and again, if you're doing this with a calculator, I encourage you to use Excel, but either way, you need to be super careful with your parentheses. So if I were plugging this into a calculator, um, just finding this portion of it would be 1.645 times the square root function whether that's in Excel using square root or in your calculator just using the square root button. And then 0.54 times 0.46 divided by 50. Make sure that 50 is still inside of the parenthesis. Otherwise, Excel or your calculator doesn't take the square root of 50 along with everything else. So what we find is our interval is 0.5. 424 and 0.656. It's very important that you then understand what exactly that means. We can claim that the true proportion of voters favor tax increase falls between those two values. So notice I'm writing them in percentages here, 42.4% and 65.6%. And the hypothesized value of 65% does fall in that interval and that supports failing to reject the null.
Okay, let's take a look now at Excel and how to do population proportions questions in Excel. So as you can see, I already have it all filled out, but let's talk about where everything came from. For the z-score, remember I'm just using the z-score formula that says take the observed proportion minus the hypothesized proportion, divide it by the square root of the observed proportion times one minus that value, divided by n. And so again, it's just using that function to find the z-score. Then we find our left and right critical values, which notice are opposites of one another. So for a left value, I need alpha to the left. For a right value, I need alpha to the right, so I need one minus alpha to the left. For the p-value, that has everything to do with the z-score. We're going to take norm s dist, for the left, it's just norm s dist. For the right, it's 1 minus norm s dist. Again, feel free to include the reject, fail to reject if you're a math nerd like me. You don't have to do it. You can just do the calculations or comparisons yourself. For the interval, we're looking at taking the right critical value because it's the positive one. And then remember, the formula says to take the critical value times p hat and then 1 minus p hat divided by n. So that's what I've done here. Keep in mind over for the z-score, we're using p and 1 minus p, but for the interval, we're using p hat and 1 minus p hat. And then of course, our interval is always centered at the observed value. So that is b4, and then minus e6 and plus e6. And we'll get to two-tailed in our next video. So if you'll notice, I've already entered 0.65. I've entered 27 and 50, but I let Excel calculate B2 divided by B3, so X divided by N. And then everything else has been done for me. And if we compare those values to the values that we have found by hand, we can see that they are in fact the same. Let's look at another example. According to the International Telecommunications Union, 75.23% of people, so stop right there, we consider 0.7523 to be P. That should be our null hypothesis. Um, of people in the United States were using the internet in 2017. A national broadband provider believes that a larger percentage, again, this is why it's one-tailed because it's going in one direction. So our alternative hypothesis is that it's greater than 0.7525. Um, suppose that the company conducts a large, simple random sample of people in the U.S. of the 8,573 respondents, 6,553 6, people indicated that they use the internet. So again, p hat is going to be whatever 6553 divided by 8. 573 is, which we'll do on the next page. And use a hypothesis test to determine if the company can be 95% confident, which of course means alpha is 0 0.05, which is 1 minus 95. So again, here is the summary. Notice I went ahead and calculated p hat to be 0 0.7644. Um, one thing I want to point out about this that a lot of students make an error on, a lot of students actually round that value and then they use that rounded value here and when they're creating their interval. And I suggest that you not do that. And that's why Excel really shines because we can use this full value in Excel and we don't have to round until we get to the end of the question. So again, we already have our null and alternative hypotheses. Let's take a look at our calculations. So our z-score again is p hat minus p. And again, I would not round that to 0.7644. I just did that so you remember which value goes where. And then this value is not rounded. This was the one given to us, so that one's okay, 0.7523. And then, of course, p, 1 minus p over n, and then the square root. So I should end up with a z-score of 0.2590. And then again, that's somewhere over here, 2.590. The critical value is going to the right, 
So again, I'm going to use norm S inverse of one minus alpha. So, or remember it said 95% confidence. So I'm using 0.95 and that gives me 1.645. So 1.645 is obviously less than 2.590. And therefore, my z-score, my test statistic, does fall in the rejection region, and I should be rejecting. In addition, I can use norm. This is a right-tailed test, so it's 1 minus norm s dist of my z-score to find my p-value. And notice that my p-value is, in fact, less than alpha, and therefore, again, it tells me to reject. So our conclusion is with P less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. There's sufficient evidence to support the alternative hypothesis, which is that the percentage of people in the U.S. who use the Internet is greater than 75.23%. Again, finding a corresponding confidence interval has everything to do with that critical value. I'm just plugging everything in that I've already found to create that interval. And remember, we rejected the null, and therefore our p-value should not be in this interval. So if you'll notice, 0 0.7523, oops, 7523, is actually less than our interval, which is how it should be, because we think the per percentage of people who use it is greater, and this tells us that it is greater, because both of those values are greater. Again, once we have Excel set up correctly, which we did in the last question for left and right tail, as you can see, all I had to do was enter in a few pieces of information to find the z-score, to find the right critical value, to find the p-value, and to know that we should in fact be rejecting the null. And of course, then I have my one-tailed interval as well. We're going to finish up next with hypothesis testing for proportions two-tailed.